All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the launch for the Harvard Extension School Lifestyle Medicine Student Society. And I'm going to hand it over to Carly Ray, who will be the president of this new student society. Yes, we are very excited to be here and for our launch. Um, Lindsay, I was seeing notifications of people wanting to join, but do you get notifications of that too? Okay. Um, okay, oh, so maybe not because I Danielle took hosting away from me. So nope, I might not. Sorry, Linz. I, I gave it back to you. So you should be able okay. to. Okay. Great. Um, so yeah, we are the Harvard Extension Lifestyle Medicine Student Society, and this is our pretty logo that we worked with Lindsay on and uh, got the design all ready to go. Um, our mission for this group is Harvard Extension um, School Lifestyle Medicine Student Association is dedicated to advocating living a healthy lifestyle based on the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. Our mission is to inform individuals about the critical role lifestyle plays in our overall well-being. We also offer resources and a supportive community to help individuals thrive in implementing and maintaining lifestyle medicine principles. And then um, you might be thinking, some of you might not be familiar with lifestyle medicine. I know before I took Dr. Frady's course, I was unfamiliar with it, but now it's my new passion. Um, and according to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, they define lifestyle medicine as, quote, a medical specialty that issues that uses therapeutic lifestyle interventions as a primary modality to treat chronic conditions, including but not limited to cardiovascular diseases, type two diabetes and obesity. And this comes together in focusing on the six pillars of lifestyle medicine, which is nutrition, physical activity, stress management, avoidance of risky substances, sleep and social connection. And all six pillars we have represented in our logo. That was something I wanted to include. So you kind of got a feel for lifestyle medicine if you just looked at our logo. And you can also check out more information on the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. We'll be including those links on our page. We also are a member on the American Lifestyle Medicine Association as well. So any events we do gain access through on there, we always will share them with you all. So if you want to attend, feel free to. Um, and then these are kind of the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. If you took Dr. Frady's course, um, her wellness course, this kind of gives like, you know, you are familiar, you've seen it. And our goal is to educate everybody on these different pillars of the lifestyle medicine and paving the path to wellness wheel. Um, and we want you to be able to feel like they are achievable. It can look overwhelming. I know when I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, let me write notes on everything. I need to include this every day of my life. But the great thing is, is if you just want to focus on one thing, you can until you feel comfortable. And what we're dedicated to is each month we plan to have dedicated to one of these. So one month we might dedicate to nutrition and we're going to be working hard and with the American lifestyle, um, the college and getting speakers that are experts in the field to come and chat with you all about it. So you feel equipped. If you want to try different things in the wheel, you can do that. Um, now I'm going to introduce our leadership team. Um, I'm Carly Ray, and I'm very excited and honored to be the president of this new group. I live in Florida. Uh, fun fact is I do have a Dalmatian. He is 120 pounds, and um, I call him Gatsby. My mom told me that I should have called him Clifford, the big red dog, because he kind of just kept growing and growing. Dalmatians are only supposed to be 60 to 70 pounds, but he's 120 pounds, um, and he's seven years old. And then I am um, currently an ALB candidate with a concentration in humanities, and I plan to apply to the joint program in the fall. That was kind of my goal this year. So I've been taking four courses each semester, and then this summer I did two, and then I did an extra two outside of the extension studies for transfer credits because my goal was to do the joint program. So I'm excited that I'm finally seeing that being achieved this fall. Um, and then I did include something that I'm passionate about. So I am passionate about lifestyle medicine. Um, there was a close family member of mine that suffers, um, they had cancer. And when they had cancer, it really touched home for me. And I decided that to be healthy, I needed to exercise, you know, and I needed to eat well. And it kind of put me in this 
really kind of one track mind where I was like, felt this really big pressure where I had to exercise or I had to eat right. And taking Dr. Frady's course, I kind of got this growth mindset of like, wait, I can actually enjoy what I'm doing. And it's really good for my wellness as well, which is something that I want to make sure everybody in our group is aware of. Um, so the pillar I do connect with is physical activity because now I do dance cardio. I'll go out, walk my dog, and I know I'm achieving my physical activity and I don't feel stressed anymore. So thanks to Dr. Frady and Tracy, who's our other advisor, they unlocked a passion inside me and it made me want to share lifestyle medicine with everybody. And I'm currently taking the science of physical activity this semester, which has been really interesting. And if anybody's taken it, or if you've seen it and you're like, I'm not sure, it's definitely a class I would recommend. A uh, fun fact too, is I do love books. As you can see on my bookshelf, they are color coordinated. It is my um, actual bookshelf. Um, and I do love to read like every genre. Um, next up, we have our vice president, which is Fiza. Um, she is here today, but she asked me to go ahead and introduce her. And I have to say, I love her photo. Um, I've never been there, but it has me wanting to travel. Um, Fiza lives in central New Jersey with her husband and three children. She is pursue pursuing the ALM in anthropology, and it is her third semester at Harvard. She's also a certified health and life coach and founded her practice two years ago. She also was in my class as well. She took Dr. Frady's well-being from the inside out, and she says that she learned all the elements of well-being that were interconnected and fitted together like puzzle pieces. Lifestyle medicine fascinated me and opened my eyes to a world of endless possibilities in the realms of mental and physical health, and she's very excited to be in our leadership group, and we're very excited to have her. Um, next up, we have Karen. Karen, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? She's here with us today. Sure. I can just say thank you to Carly Ray and to everybody for having us. Carly Ray and Tracy, you guys did such a great job in, in getting us off the ground. Um, I'm in Northern Virginia. I am a board certified health and wellness coach. I have a background in communications and um, I took Dr. Frady's class also in the fall and loved, loved, loved it for so many different reasons. Um, but I have to say my favorite thing about lifestyle medicine in that class in particular was learning about all the different pillars and how they all sort of work together to impact our health and happiness. And also, I'm very interested in how our health and happiness can spread to other people, either through our mirror neurons, through our behaviors, other people being, um, you know, watching us, being inspired by us, encouraged by us seeing us make smoothies in the morning or going out to walk the dog and exercising, whatever. Um, it really, it's contagious and it spreads. And so it's good for us and it's good for other people. And generally I find people interested in making healthy behavior changes to be a lot of fun. And they're, um, it's just wonderful. So thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I did learn when I do clean my bookshelves and have to move them all, I am doing my physical activity for the day. <laughs> Um, and Karen is also our director of events. I forgot to say that. <laughs> um, all right. Next up, we have Kat. I think Kat is here. Kat, if you want to chime in and introduce yourself, you can. Um, I didn't see the chat. Let me see. Okay, Kat. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can unmute or if you wanted to, but um, Kat is our Director of Internal Affairs, and she's also our secretary. Um, she is based in Canada, and she graduated from psychology from York University, and she recently earned her ALM in Industrial and Organizational Psychology here at the Extension School, and she's walking the commencement stage next month, which is very exciting. I am so excited for you. Hopefully next year I'll be doing the same, so congratulations. Um, her passion for health and well-being led her to the lifestyle medicine course with Dr. Frady. She was also in our course um, this past semester where she connected with other like-minded people. Her new collaborations were born, which brought us all here today. In her spare time, she likes reading, cooking, skiing, traveling, dancing, and spending time with family and friends. So we are very excited to have Kat part of our leadership team as well. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Salima, and Salima and I actually were in a writing course together, and so now we get to connect here. So Salima, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. So my name is Salima Abdeljawit. Uh, I live in, in Abidjan, in the Ivory Coast. I'm half French, half Tunisian, and uh, I actually uh, worked on several educational initiatives here in West Africa. Uh, I also work as a columnist for a lifestyle magazine, and I write children's books. 
um, my goal is really to try and incorporate everything that we've learned at Harvard and that I've learned, you know, throughout my career to really help, uh, you know, research findings find their way in the educational system and in all schools. And I think that there's a lot to be done in that field. Um, and I think that lifestyle medicine and more generally holistic approaches really have a key role uh, to play here and class taught by Dr. Freitas, I think I was also in the same one as you guys, but uh, as we were saying earlier with Kali, I kind of mix up the timelines at times. And um, and so I took that amazing class, I'm also taking the culinary psychology one at the moment, and I took another amazing class taught by uh, uh, Dr. Tokama Espinosa, uh, which focuses on the neuroscience of education and that really touches base on so many great topics and subfields. And the idea here, and that's why I'm so excited to be part of this great organization, is to spread the word and have as many people as possible come and share their expertise. And yeah, if you heard some noise in the back, I'm so sorry, but I have a husky and he's eating his bone. So that's why. <laughs> so, that's thank you very much. Cheers. Yes, thank you, Selena. Uh, and Selena is going to be actually presenting our first activity in a few minutes as well. Um, let me see. All right, next up we have Kristen. Kristen was also in our lifestyle medicine class last semester. Um, and I don't, if you want to chime in, Kristen, feel free to, but she is our director of finance and our treasurer. Um, Kristen currently lives in Austin, Texas. She's in the process of obtaining her master's degree in psychology at the extension studies and will be graduating next spring. So maybe we will be graduating together, Kristen. Um, she's always had an interest in all things psychology, but after after taking Dr. Frady's course, her enthusiasm for lifestyle medicine grew. She's truly passionate about the mind, body, and soul connection and helping others live their best life. Outside of school, she enjoys spending time with family, friends, exercising, painting, listening to live music, and traveling. So we're excited to have Kristen as well. Um, and then Carissa could not be here, um, but she is our public relations and hopefully she'll be joining in the next meeting. Um, and then next up, we have our faculty advisors introduction. We do have Tracy here. So Tracy, if you want to introduce yourself and Beth. Thank you, Carly Ray. It's a pleasure to be a faculty advisor for this group. I, um, I work on Dr. Beth Frady's teaching staff for her lifestyle medicine courses. So I've had the opportunity to work with all of the leaders here in one class or another. And I really enjoy lifestyle medicine as much as they do, right? I was introduced to lifestyle medicine when I was in Harvard Extension School, getting a master's degree in psychology. I took one of Dr. Beth Frady's classes and it lifestyle medicine immediately resonated with me. Why? Because I always had the belief that we had the power to affect our own health through our behavior, right? And so I've had the opportunity to work with Dr. Frady since then, uh, since uh, 2016, actually, um, on different writing projects, uh, writing books, uh, doing research, writing articles. And she really got me introduced to my love of research, right, particularly in this area. So I did go on to get my PhD in business psychology, and I continue to work as a educator in lifestyle medicine. So it's my pleasure to be here. I'm just here as an advisor, right? Just to guide, right? Provide oversight, right? The leaders run the group. I'm here to connect you with uh, opportunities in the community, opportunities in the university. And it's just, it's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> We're excited to have you, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you. And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Dr. Beth Frades is our other faculty advisor. Dr. Frades is a leader in lifestyle medicine. She is an award winning educator at Harvard Medical School. She's written several textbooks. She is the president of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. So, for those of you who've had classes with her, she is a very dynamic personality, very <laughs> energetic, right? She loves sharing lifestyle medicine with others. She's also a, a coach, a lifestyle medicine coach, and she coaches within Harvard Medical School with physicians there. So having her as a, our other advisor just brings a wealth of information and connection. 
I know that this group is going to be very, very successful. So, so privileged to have her. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're very excited to have you guys as well. And we also did apply to the PEG Award. Um, and it was because of Tracy and Dr. Prades that brought that to our attention. So I got in the paperwork. So we'll hear in a few weeks. So um, we will be giving you guys the link. If you're on our email, we'll keep you guys posted on that. I'm excited. Um, and yeah. <laughs> And then next up, um, I know Salima, she is going to be, we're going to kind of get you guys started in thinking about um, the paving the path wheel and SMART goals. And so Selena, did you want to go ahead and present this slide? Sure. So let's get her, let's get started on this. Let's get straight to the point. Um, one of the things that I remember that Husky I mentioned, just give me one second and I'll be back. And I don't know if you guys can click the um, links or um, I can see if I can put the link in the chat, but it's something you guys can also do on your, let me see if I. Sorry, back. pretend that never happened. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, just getting started on this, one of the most important things about Dr. Freity's method and one I especially appreciated is how practical it is uh, in the workbook that she provides you know in her in her classes you get to answer questions you get to also question yourself and your way of living and one of the key elements is smart goals and she provided us with a link to kind of have an idea of how well one is actually doing when it comes to well-being and wellness so here you actually have mine, I'm coming clean here. And as you can see, I have some work to do when it comes to stress, um, but you know, it's okay. It's a journey and that's what wellness is. So the good thing to do, because at some point this may change, maybe I'll do extremely well on stress at some point and a little less well when it comes to, I don't know, um, social connection, that sounds like the home body I am. Uh, and therefore, you know, we try and incorporate SMART goals. And those are amazing because let me explain, first of all, what all these letters stand for. The S is for specific. The M is for measurable. The A is for achievable. The R is for relevant. And the T is for time-based. And the thing is that all of these elements are really going to help you achieve your goals and not let them float into thin air as they may sometimes do after January 1st. So um, here's how you go about, about this. For example, in my case, uh, I'm not performing so well when it comes to stress management. Do you guys have any tool for me that would actually work with the SMART? So let's keep it in mind. The S is for specific. The M is for measurable. The A for achievable. The R for relevant. And the T for time-based. Feel free. Shoot whatever you have in mind. You are the coach here, what would you advise to Paul Salima, who is very stressed at the moment? Sleep. You can write it in the chat for free. Or you can just also, you know, box breathing is a fantastic idea, which we will touch base later on. I don't want to disclose too much. Sleep. Ah, but look at the sleep variable here i'm actually not it, it, I'm, I'm not the best performer at sleep but it's not that bad so i take a five minute break daily so what is especially good about that one is that you have a, a very clear time frame it's a daily goal so that's also interesting because you can set the goal to be a daily one a weekly one three month based and something that's also going to be extremely helpful is to try and incorporate ways to check in with yourself the, that's the m in measurable Love that some of you already know the smart goals. Now, if you want to try that on yourself, and thank you so much for your advice, I'll get back to you once I try that on myself, um, is that you can go ahead and try the test yourself. It's quite easy, quite quick, and you can share in the chat. That would be really fantastic where you, you know, the test reveals you must perhaps do some work to feel better. And that's really at the essence of what we're doing here. I reshared the same link that Carly had shared earlier, just in case some of you had missed it. Yeah. And the great thing is, is you can do this like at the beginning of semester and then like test it after, like maybe you'll see you're super stressed at the end, but like you weren't at the beginning. So it does change and fluctuate as you go, but it's just a kind of a personal thing, kind of like Selena said, to give you a guideline, um, just to kind of see where you are. And there is no right or wrong answer when you're answering the questions. Um, 
And now next up now lifestyle medicine activities to try just to kind of give you guys some things like as you're thinking about is like Selena was saying, like, take a break during the day, even if it's like five minutes, if you're working on a paper, like get up, just move around, staying organized, like eating a well-balanced diet, daily exercise, managing your time, enough sleep is also something that's key, but just kind of things to like keep in your mind that you feel like are achievable for you is the most important thing. And like I said, you don't have to focus on like everything, like, you know, don't get stressed, like focus one pillar at a time. Like I admit when I first started taking Dr. Brady's course, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I need to sleep when I did the PayPal. Oh my gosh, I need to drink more water. I, I need to like <laughs> go outside more. Yeah, like I need to maintain my stress. And I was even more stressed. So it can be easy to kind of fall into like something like that. But it is important to be like, okay, just like calm down like take one step at a time like now I'll eat blueberries with my oatmeal and I'm like eating more of my nutrition in a day so like it is just about incorporating one or two things don't stress out you know like I said it is easy to do when you first see everything that there is achievable for you to do for your wellness um now, I did include this because this is something that's kind of easy to achieve is when you're sitting in lecture and they're like, OK, you guys got a five minute break or 10 minute break. Or I know some professors might not give you a break, but, you know, just turn your camera off for five minutes. Um, these are some stretches that you can do. And since we've been sitting here, I thought everybody could stand up. Now, if you do have a I'm hoping to get a standing desk. I don't have one now. Um, but oh, I see Andrea. She has a standing desk. Yeah. So. Oh, so does Tracy. Yeah. So if you guys just want to like stand up um, and just kind of get out of your chair, they're just like simple exercises. The first one looks really intense. I don't think I could do that. But if you are super flexible, feel free to do that one. But just kind of like putting your arms like over your head, doing like a few calf raises, just like a few motions just to kind of like keep your body moving. Um, it's just something you could do like in between, just like stretching. It gets the blood flowing again. Um, and it actually keeps you more focused. Sometimes when I'm sitting in lecture and I get like really tired listening to the, the lecture, I'll stand up and it give, makes me feel more energized now. Yeah. So they're just like different things for you to try stuff that like keeps your blood flowing. Um, yeah. So I did include those. Like I said, a few of them look kind of not as achievable, but if you are flexible, you can do it like a back bend. <laughs> so they're just Why like did you put that things. first? <laughs> it was like came with the thing and i was like well somebody you know you're flexible also the one under it am i supposed I to like be in the air like this <laughs> <laughs> i think it's on the ground <laughs> yes, and the one next to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah same, same with the back bend one um yeah <laughs> this fun ones to try uh but yeah calf raises too are ones you can do as well um, and now this is box breathing and, um, Karen's going to be leading us through that. I had never tried this. Ex um, the first time I tried, it was in Dr. Frady's course, but when I was stressed, cause I was taking the, I think it was the speech class and I had to talk in front of everybody. This really helped me. It made me like, kind of like calm my nerves with before I would be like, when are they calling my name? Oh my gosh, I got to give this speech in two minutes or, you know, so yeah, if, um, Karen, you want to lead us through that. Thank you so much. Wow. After all that energy, this is going to be hard. <laughs> energy is contagious. Okay. We're going to completely switch focus here for a minute. And I've never led a public box breathing exercise before. So stay with me. Um, so the purpose of box breathing for those who don't know is to help calm you down. So if you're feeling scattered or disorganized or anxious, um, box breathing can help you regulate your breathing and it gives you a sense of peace, helps you feel centered, helps you feel grounded. So before we start that, um, I'd like to ask you to take your hands. If you feel comfortable, put it on your heart, take a deep breath and just feel your heart beating. Mine's pounding. <laughs> just feel your heart breathing and Think about that for a second. Your heart is beating 24 seven every day, supporting you. We're not asking it to, it's just there for you at all times. And that's pretty cool. And if you remember from biology, your heart has four chambers. And when we use box breathing, we're going to be counting to four. So I'm gonna describe what the practice of box breathing is and then we're gonna go ahead and do it. So. 
box breathing is so simple. You can pretty much do it anywhere, anytime, if you feel so led. And it involves breathing in for a count of four, holding for a count of four, breathing out for a count of four, holding for a count of four. That's one rep. And today we're going to do that four times in a row. Um, so I hope everybody has that. It's good to breathe deeply. So if you have one hand on your heart, one hand on your tummy, you're really going to want to see your tummy extend. Then you, you know, you're breathing deeply into your tummy when you're doing that. Sometimes if we're hyped up or agitated, or whatever, we're breathing shallowly into our chests and we're really going to get the benefits of relaxation by breathing into um, our bellies. So um, at this point, I would like to invite you to close your eyes if it feels safe to you. If it doesn't, you can keep your eyes open. You can look away. Um, I'd like to put my hand on my heart, hand on my belly, and we're going to breathe in for a count of four. Hold for four. Out for four. Hold for four. In for four. Hold for four. Out for four. Hold for four. In for four. Hold for four. Out for four. Hold for four. Last time, in for four. Hold for four. Out for four. Hold for four. You can open your eyes if they're closed. Take a deep breath. Feel your feet on the ground. You have the ground supporting you. Feel the back of your chair if you're seated again, how your chair is supporting you. And I hope that made you feel a little centered and grounded and you can use that at any time if it works for you. So thank you for letting me do that. Thank you, Karen. That was great. You would not know that was your first time. We'll have you always do that at the beginning of our meeting before we take our cardio stretching. <laughs> All right. Now, um, I put together like these like five tips for stress management, kind of just to think about, um, like set goals that are achievable for yourself. Like it is easy if you're looking at the paving the path to be like, oh, like I need to work on my, sh you know, sleep. And then you set like this, like unachievable goal and then you don't hit it. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't hit my goal. Set like little goals. You can always add to your goal. Um, practice box breathing, like what Karen just did um, for us. I think somebody in the chat earlier said how they do it before they go to bed. That's actually, I do that too. Um, if I'm like trying to get to bed and I need to just like relax, that really helps. Um, doing physical activity. So like I said, taking your dog for a walk, uh, planting flowers, just like fun things. No, you can achieve it. Like, don't think, you know, oh, I need to go out and run 10 miles today. Like, no, like do something you enjoy um, and, it, and build upon that. Um, eating a well-balanced diet. And also it's important to celebrate your daily achievements. That was one I kind of forgot about. Um, but even writing, like I have like these like sticky notes, like even writing stuff on there, like, you know, celebrate yourself. Like if you did something great, right, wrote a great paper or, you know, got good news, it's important to celebrate that um, because it does help with your overall wellness as well. Um, and then I did include this. We learned this in the wellness uh, class, eating the rainbow. So what does that mean? Just kind of like, you know, if you're looking at your plate, incorporating different foods into your diet. Um, so like eating bananas or strawberries. Um, we have been talking about having speakers come in and focus on nutrition. I know, Selena, we were talking about also having, you know, a chef. We will be having our social media up soon now that we're officially a student group. So, you know, it might be fun if we, you know, included different things for um, you guys to try at home that are achievable. Um, just different things for you guys to think about as well, because nutrition is another part 
of the pillars. Um, and then I included this too, because it's important that physical activities are everywhere. Um, you know, even if you don't think they are, like I did include, you know, cleaning your house, walking your dog. Um, it's starting to get, I'm in Florida, so it's starting to get warm here. Um, but, you know, swimming, biking, uh, washing your car, just like different things kind of to think about. Um, and then I put a daily reminder, just take five minutes and stretch, go outside, celebrate you today. Um, here, you know, at our student society, we want to build everybody up, um, make everybody feel welcome. And we want everybody to feel the same kind of passion we have for lifestyle medicine that we found in a lot of us, Dr. Frady's course and with Tracy. So we want to be able to pass that along um, to all of you as well. And then to stay up to date, we are officially, we do have our WhatsApp up, thanks to Lindsay. Um, we will be changing out our logo and everything on there. Um, and then I did create a form, which I can put in the chat. So if you aren't on our email list yet, you can get on our email list and stay up to date on everything as well. Um, Carly, Carly, your logo and chat name have already been updated. Oh, great. Okay, thank you, Lindsay. Okay. Yeah, so if you guys need the links on anything, um, I'll, we'll put those in the chat for you all as well. Um, but we're very excited to be an official student society, and we look forward to having our events coming up. Hopefully in a few weeks, we're going to be setting the dates uh, with everybody. So thank you. Um, and then let me see if I can stop sharing. Okay. Uh, Dim Dimitros, Dim I hope I'm saying your name right. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Uh, congratulations for the launch. I'm uh, uh, a board uh, director of technology at the HESA level. As I was wondering if you have considered already to create uh, part of the um, your web page within the website, because we can also help you uh, set this up. Um, and if you have already the presentation, maybe you can share it with me um, and we can uh, coordinate to set it up and put your bios as well on the website of the Hesa. Um, yeah, I don't have that yet. I know I was, I was sending Lindsay like a whole bunch of questions on WhatsApp. I was like trying to remember everything. So if you want to, do you want me to email you or what's the easiest thing? You can just let me know. Yes. Like I will write my email in the chat. Um, and if you can share like the presentation with your bios, I can already okay. put them up. Bro, uh, so we have it uh, also there for everyone to be able to visit and maybe you can add your WhatsApp uh, group link or any other information you want uh, so people can find it very easily. Okay, that sounds great. Um, let me, uh, hold on, let me see. Do I stop the recording now, Lindsay? I saw that in the chat. Sure, unless there's anything else that you wanted recorded. Okay, Um. well, are there any other questions or anything? Um. <laughs> Uh, I'll get all that set up. And um, if you are on the email list, I did put the form on there. We're also going to be working on getting all of our social media up for, so everybody can join in. So we kind of stay connected on everything as well. Um, but those were all the, I don't know if anybody else had any questions. Well, thank you guys. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you for joining us for our uh, official launch of the HES Lifestyle Medicine Student Society.